So I have Joshua, who's 17. Marissa, she's going to be 16 in July. Um, Mason is just turned 13 in February. Alex is just turned 12 about a week ago. And Erica is eight years old. And the kids just, um, they came here and everybody just loved them and they just kept coming. And this church has like really been involved in their life, their entire life before, you know, um, I was even around, that's for sure. I've been in active addiction for about 10 years. So of course, you know, I was just always my life just trying to seek to find something to fill inside here, you know, since I was a kid, you know, just always searching and trying to find that love. And um, of course, I searched in all the wrong places. I, I found, you know, try to find it in men and um, just different people or just always trying to just, you know, make me feel better, you know. So the worst of it, though, was about the summer of 2018. So that May, um, you know, social services had gotten involved. We all lived with Joanne. Um, and, and thank, I get so emotional because I'm so grateful for her. She was, uh, she was there when I wasn't, you know? And she's wonderful. And it's just crazy because you would think like having so many kids and stuff that you would feel that, but when you're lost in addiction, it's not a real love. You know, you can't even love yourself, let alone five little kids, you know, you just can't. So the summer of 2018, I overdosed 13 times. Um, I was trying to die just because I didn't have no hope. After that last overdose and I looked up and Joanne had brought the kids to see me. It was just the three of them now. <laughs> but I remember in that moment, like even in my craziness, I was like, man, you know, they're broken just like I was, you know, and like I, everything that I feared I'm doing to them. So after they had left, it was just me and this nurse, you know, she's so wonderful. Her name's Lisa. And she came in every morning, she took care of me. And she said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. And at first it didn't, you know, I was like, this lady's crazy, you know? But it, it did something to me inside, you know, it really did. And so I said to the Lord, it was just me and God there, you know? And I was like, God, you're gonna have to help me because I can't, you know, I don't even know what to pray. You know, I said, but something's got to be, there's gotta be something more. You know, this cannot be it, you know? So about a week after this, I got arrested. <laughs> And it's just crazy, I never thought I'd say it, but man, it saved my life and it saved my soul. And I remember when the cops arrested me, for the first time in my life, I was free. I was truly free, like there was no more, no more chasing, no more fear, none of that. It was over. When the judge gave me my 365 day sentence, you know, <laughs> it's crazy, but I was happy. <laughs> You know, I was, for the first time I had joy in me. You know, I went back to my cell and, you know, one of the girls says, you know, for you getting here, you sure are happy. I said, I am. I said, cause it's over. And I started to change, you know, inside. I started to randomly, you know, and I wasn't chasing, seeking at this point, but I knew I was different. I knew I was free, you know? So I started to randomly pray for people. I wouldn't normally pray for, you know? I thought, this is crazy. This right here is crazy, you know? And then, um, I, then I start my prayers just started getting a little bit bigger, you know. Then I'm like, Lord, I need to be in a different place, surrounded by people who want to serve you. And I'm not thinking a, a, a rehab or nothing like that. I'm thinking another jail cell, you know, maybe a smaller one or something, you know, maybe around people who wanted to change, you know. That's what I really thought. A couple weeks after that is when, uh, you know, uh, they told me they said, you know, pack your stuff, you're you're going home, you know. And I'm like, oh no, you know, I got fear in me of course and because uh, at that point it's free will so when i got down to the booking chair they said you're going to hope city so i get to hope city and i'm telling the staff there you're gonna have to take me back to jail i cannot do this this is crazy like i can't face me i can't face all the hurt that i've done to my kids i can't face my family i can't even face myself and they're like you're gonna do this we're not taking you back to jail there is something more for you god has a plan for your life and you, you're just not doing it you know you're gonna do this you can do this so I'd gone up to the prayer room and uh, I'm fighting it and I'm rolling my eyes and I'm sliding up and down in the pews and I'm just, you know, but I couldn't move, you know, and looking back, I know that was the Lord keeping me still. So I go up to the pulpit and I grab a white Bible and in my lap fell a handwritten scripture on a piece of paper about like this long and I have it in a frame in my house that says I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So that was my first real God moment, you know, and I was like, Phew. That was the Lord, and He spoke to me through that. It's so dear to me, you know, like, 
so uh, I was like, okay, Lord, I surrender, you know. I remember I cried out to you, Lord, change this. And that nurse, you know, I believe that, man, she loved the Lord, you know, and that's what we're called to do is to tell the goodness of God and who he is and that his love covers a multitude of sins. So I surrendered and, uh, man, I really dove into my Bible, you know, and I really took refuge in the Lord. Just wanted more of him because the more I had of him, the more that emptiness inside was filled. It was gone. I no longer ached for, for love. Because when Christ meets you where you're at, he brings love. I'm trusting that everything's going to be okay, you know. So I was trying to, in that moment, like, not doubt and not fear, which was super hard, you know. And tears just start rolling. And I remember saying in that moment, I said, I said, though, Lord, though you slay me, yet I'll still serve you. It's not going to change my faith. It's not going to make me leave Hope City. You know, but help me be okay. You know, help me accept that this is your will for somebody else, you know, for, that you're going to use this to your glory. So the judge is like, this is how we're going to settle this. He goes, Mr. Roberts, you get out, go live with your mom, work the case plan. He said, all five kids to Hope City with mom July the 1st. And I was like, it was only the Lord that I'm telling you, because when I went in there, my recommendation was some supervised visits. That was the best shot at being a mommy to them kids. You know, and I just, so immediately in the courtroom, I dropped to my knees, I throw my arms in the air and I'm praising God right there because man, I knew it was only by his grace and mercy, you know? So it's been almost a year. Um, they come to live with me July the 1st. Uh, now, man, I tell you what we're called to do as women. We are called, you know, to disciple our children. That is our ministry as women. We are to teach them about Jesus and the true love of God and, and to make them good, godly young men and women and raise them in, in the Lord, you know? That's what we are called to do. So every night, because God's given me this wonderful opportunity again. Every night we read the word together, chapter by chapter, and we pray together every night. That is the thing that we do. My kids know, and we do gratefuls every single night. Mason, um, so everybody thinks he's gonna be a preacher. <laughs> I believe that, you know, and uh, every night he'll say, I'm so grateful, Lord, for your grace and mercy. And he says, Lord, thank you for letting me see my mom and dad be drug addicts. He goes, because I know who you are, you know? And then Alex will say, he goes, Lord, let this be a short life so I can see your face. You know, and Erica calls it the land of milk and honey, and I don't even think she even knows what that means, but I know what that means, you know? And uh, her, her prayers, and she's just growing in the Lord, and Joshua, he's playing the guitar, and he's singing unto the Lord, you know? And Marissa, she sings, like, and, and they're joyful, you know? And I look back on every bit of this, and it's all because God loves. He loves so much, and He just wants us to love. You know, those are the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all your mind, heart, and soul, and then you love your neighbor as yourself. His grace and mercy never ceases, you know, and if there's breath in your lungs, there's hope, and the hope is in Jesus. You know, it really, truly is, and I'm so grateful for it.